joining us on today's call. If you don't mind kind of looking back at the last four weeks of conference play for your team and then what you're looking forward to the most uh, as we close conference play over the next four weeks. Well, good morning, first of all. And uh, <clears throat> I am looking forward to the uh, this closing run of the season. I was kind of take a conference play into two halves, uh, the first half and then the second half of the season. We've obviously entered into the second half, closing half for the conference play. And uh, I'm really excited. Uh, at least in the first half, you get a chance to uh, get a good taste of this league and, and what it's about and what's required to be successful in this league. And for our program, particularly a growing program um, in this league, we don't have the tradition that particularly the teams at the top have and um, it's, we're learning how to win and what it takes to win in this league. And I think the first half of conference play you know, was an eye-opener for our guys, and, I, and, and but it also gave a more renewed vigor in terms of their approach to the game because they understand what's required to be able to be successful in this league. Thanks, Coach. And if any media members have questions for ECU head coach Michael Perry, uh, feel free to chime in now. As a reminder, it is star one to ask a question. And we'll take our question from Andrew Dottie from Hero Sports. Please go ahead. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time to chat this morning. Uh, this is the second time you've taken over a program in the middle of the season. Obviously, you know, both this situation and the one 15 years ago, you know, have their own differences. But, you know, having done it twice now, I'm curious if you can shed some light on, on how you approach this, you know, with your team throughout the season. You talked about vigor in the, in the opening and how your guys kind of respond to having a change of leadership and then kind of looking at their individual careers going forward. How do they respond to a change like that, and how are you handling it? Well, I, I give a lot of credit to the kids and that they've been able to uh, respond extremely well. And I think there are a couple of variables that affected that uh, in, 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 a, in a good way. Uh, so we were not – particularly adversely affected by it. I think the fact that um, there were some guys in the locker room clearly that uh, were accustomed to my voice because I did so last year. I had to step in last year and uh, take over the team. So those guys were familiar with me, and they also could shed some light on things that I'm looking for, how I communicate to uh, the new guys. So I think that certainly helped in, the, in one regard. Uh, the fact that I'm experienced in this uh, does lend his hand to being able to uh, to deal with certain issues that can you know that, that can happen. Um, this isn't always easy. Uh, right now, we've got a pretty smooth transition because there's so much you have to manage other than just uh, what's happening on the basketball floor. Uh, you're being asked to, uh, to step into a position of leadership, and and when you have the interim tag on you, you don't always have the most leverage, obviously. Um, but again, the leverage comes from respect and um, this. I've gained their respect and I've gained their trust uh, through the relationships that I have with these guys. So that's really been able to give me leverage and give me a stronger voice with this group. Uh, you said it's been a smooth transition because they were used to your voice, but you know, overall it's still you know, not an easy thing to handle. Is it hard for, um, I know this might be a hard question for you to answer, but is it hard to kind of be in the moment at all for you and the players knowing that, you know, you're not sure what the future does hold? Well, I think in, in both cases, the players as well as myself, and I made it clear from the very beginning, this isn't about uh, necessarily the future in terms of uh, who's going to be coaching a basketball team, who's going to be your coach. Right now, uh, the emphasis and the direction is about winning the next basketball game. So we're taking it one game as a t at a time, and, uh, and all our emphasis and all our direction and all our efforts are, are put into winning the next basketball game. So we're not looking uh, looking ahead, to, uh, and, and, and by doing so, we're not having to deal with some of those issues that sometimes and, uh, and uncertainty they go along uh, with those th these type of transitions. So, uh, whereas it has been a smooth transition, I am uh, aware also that this doesn't usually happen. Let's be serious; it doesn't. And um, but I can't speak enough about these kids. And, and again, I, I, I get back to respect and trust. And um, as a result of that, they've responded. Thanks a lot, Coach. Safe travels this week. Thank you. We'll take our next question from Ken Davis from TheAthletic.com. Please go ahead. Good morning, Coach. You talked in uh, your opening there about uh, about a 
taking a step back and assessing the conference in the first half. Um, the league used to be criticized a lot for being sort of two leagues in one, a really strong top and a really, really weak bottom. Do you, do you get the feeling that, I mean, looking at the records of the teams and some of the things that have happened this year, that uh, the, the bottom half is getting closer to the top, that, uh, that the competitiveness is, has uh, moved up in this conference? Yes, yeah, certainly, and I think uh, in our case, and I just speak for us, uh, being a part of a league like this uh, eventually will pay dividends, and it doesn't always reflect. Uh, it, you won't see the results necessarily within the first year or so. Uh, it's going to take some time, but um, being a part of a league like this, playing against teams with tremendous tradition, uh, it's only going to help uh, going forward for your basketball team. And as your team gets better, you're going to find uh, ourselves and other teams also climbing up the ranks. Uh, we certainly don't have the tradition that Cincinnati and uh, Connecticut have, uh, or even Memphis and Temple's one of the all-time winningest programs in the country. Wichita State has great tradition. Houston, I mean, it's a lot of teams with rich basketball tradition, and they've got recent uh, success as well. Uh, so you're going to be able to attract some really quality young men to your program as a result of the league you're playing in and also the television coverage that we has afforded us in this league as well. So you're going to be able to bring in a better product. Now, you're playing against really good players, but I just think if you're able to put together uh, – better and stronger recruiting classes, eventually your program gets better. You start you know, kind of getting a niche of what you're going to be, what, defining an identity basically for your program, then I think you have an opportunity to get better as a program. And, again, a lot of it's because of uh, our affiliation in this league. Is the, I'm assuming you're going to say that the recruiting is the biggest part of that. I mean, you mentioned television and some other things, but but it's it always goes back to recruiting, right? Yeah, and the television helps, no question about it. When you're into the kids' homes and you're telling them uh, every conference game is going to be televised on ESPN of some sort, uh, that's an attractive selling point. Uh, also being able to play against uh, teams like Cincinnati and Connecticut and uh, Wichita State. And, and, you know, another thing with kids, and a, lot of, a lot of young men are the same. I was there as a player. You know, you work out and you play and you, you dream of one day playing against, you know, top 25 teams or top 10 teams on national television. That's what you dream about as a player. We're able to make those dreams come true to put them in a position where they can do that. And they've always dreamed about being able to make the winning shots against a top 25 team, and, and we give them that opportunity to do so. So it is attractive. Recruiting is really attractive, and there's a lot of resources available in this league that, that lend themselves to you being able to recruit some high-quality players. Does it surprise you at all that Cincinnati has been able to maintain a undefeated record in this league given – those things you just said that it's it's highly competitive this year yeah sure no uh yes and no i mean it's uh they're well coached they have great talent and they got great tradition guys know how to win so that in itself says they should be successful and they are successful um but I think they maximize that uh, in terms of, of the recruiting efforts. Uh, they do an excellent job at, at I think, being able to maximize uh, the potential out of their recruiting classes. Uh, I think that's one of their strengths. Uh, you look at some people, and not necessarily in this league, but even some other leagues around the country, and they may bring in uh, highly sought-after kids. But does it ever really come to fruition? Do those kids, does it eventually translate to those kids, you know, becoming you know, really stellar players, outstanding players, all conference players? I've seen it happen for Cincinnati. And, a lot, and in some cases, the kids have exceeded expectations. Thanks, Coach. Right. Well, well, Coach Perry, I think we've taken up uh, more than enough of your time uh, today, so we'll let you get back to, to prepping for your upcoming games. But really appreciate it. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you down the road. Appreciate you. Thank you.